guys, it's me, Rachel. Um, th today's sermon is going to be interesting. Um, I'm I'm really excited about it. Um, it's called, it's called having a heart of compassion. Let's pray. Father, I praise you for what you're about to do, what you're about to fill me with, what you're about to speak uh, from the portals of heaven. Use me, Lord, to just send forth your word and to give us, to give us a more compassionate heart. Help us to grow and learn each day and change it. And just do your thing through us. We are your people, the sheep of your pastor, and we, as your sheep, follow you and endeavor to do what you do. In the name of Jesus, amen. Hi, guys. This whole thing started when I was um, when I was thinking about the book I'm reading. The book I'm reading is basically about this this family they have four children four boys and then they have another child and this child um probably he's a little boy he wants to be he's very different he he dresses differently he um does things differently and it turns out he wants to be a girl. Now I I don't um condone this but reading this book gave me a first hand look about what it might be like to have um a child that is struggling with sexual identity in today's world and just and just thinking about that whole window and how um this poor child is struggling with sexual identity it gave me a, a kind of a first hand look about how someone could struggle with that because I've never struggled with that. I've never known anybody that has struggled with identity issues um, with that. It was just really enlightening. And I was thinking of just having a compassionate heart. Now, having a compassionate heart doesn't mean you throw away your, your, your moral compass and just say everything is okay, whatever. Having a compassionate heart is still holding on to your values, but asking God to give you his eyes in relation to that person and how they feel and how to give you um, a heart of empathy. And I think that is what uh, the church is m missing. Just the heart to be empathetic towards people. We don't have to throw away what we believe and what the Bible says. Um, but. I do believe um,
that the Lord wants us to have heart of compassion. A heart that exemplifies him. A heart that Um, a heart that we can say that we are believers, we are Christians, that we just um, exemplify what it is to be a like Christ person. When I think of Christ in the Bible, I think of um, the woman at the the woman at the well and how he and how he. Um, kind of approached her first as a person and then dealt with um, her sin. Um, Because basically um, what we've been accused of doing is seeing the sin first and then the person. And when you see the sin and then the person that person becomes a project and i think the one of the things about the church is people have been accused of becoming projects and not real people like Um, like, we have to fix them, or we have to do this in regards to them, but we don't, we need to see people as people first, and then, and then when they get to know us, get to know what people we are, if the Lord, um, allows us to bring up the subject, then we can minister to them. We don't have to come right away with our Bibles and waving it in the air or stand um, in Toronto young and done the square and preach. Um, but we, we do, we, we have to start with seeing that this person is a person and not just a, 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 a soul that needs to be won. And yes, people are souls, and they need Jesus. But let's not start there. Um, guys, I'm having having some problems with my camera this morning so um let me just uh stop this and see if i can fix it and then uh, when i fix it i can i can come back and we can do this again i'll come back with the part two
Oh, here it is. Um, guys, I'm back. Sorry about that. That whole that whole thing is my camera was going crazy. So I'm back. Yeah, I was talking about um, having a compassionate heart when it comes to approaching people with the gospel. And I was thinking about the woman at the well and how the woman at the well, um, when the Lord approached her, he approached her as a person and really just began to um, minister to her as a person. Um, before he talked about the five issues, he... Um, before he talked about her issues, he said, um, he started up a conversation with her and then, um, just in the natural real conversation, and then he, he, um, talked about her issues, um, with the five husbands and whatever, he, and he didn't do it in a judgmental way. Um, when the Lord confronts you with issues, he's very gentle. And I think, and I think we've, we've totally missed the fact of just being gentle, um, sometimes with the way we talk to people and the way we are with people. And I think sometimes it's our zeal, but we have to understand that that person that soul we're reaching to is a, a person is just like us and just as broken as we are and just as fragile as we are and if we can see us in that person that's where this that's where we we will begin but if we just can but if we continue to see people as projects or and this is a soul to be one um without any relationship with that person without any kind of um kind of um rapport with that person will just turn them off. Like, if you just come up on the street and give a, give uh, one of those uh, paper tracks to a person or invite them to church, um, they would be less likely to do it. And then, and as if um, you, you're just, wanting to be friends with them because you want to invite them to, ter to church. That is not the way to win a soul. The way to win a soul is through relationship. Is through just not even setting out to invite them to church because remember, the church is not a building. The church is about the people. 
uh, the building is just the house. And I think we've, uh, we in the body of Christ have been accused of just being judgmental and closed-minded and because we have a goal to win souls. But our, like, it's not our job to win them. It's to, our job is to just show Christ. And by showing the attitude of Christ, and by showing the love of Christ, and by showing the grace of Christ, and by showing who Christ is, then we will win them because Christ is just, Christ is potent by it himself. He doesn't need any help from us. And I think that is the problem. Um, with us, we think that God needs help, and I think um, by showing a heart of compassion, I think that's how we'll win, how uh, the kingdom will get larger, because I always look at the world and say, if people really knew who God was, if people in the pews and in the pulpit sometimes and out in the world really knew who God was, they would want him. Because he's better than any drug, better than anything you can ever imagine. But I think we've we've given people the wrong impression of Christ. Um, either he's like a weak thing that just loves and just accepts everything or he's a righteous judge to hit you over the head. He's both and neither. He's he's what he needs to be at the time he needs to be it for whatever person he needs to be it for. He knows what you need and he gives you what you need at the time and he's with you. It's just an amazing thing when you think of uh, who Jesus is and how he rules with people and how he loves people. And it's just an amazing thing that I was like, if I could share this with the world, I would just say he's like the best friend you could ever have. And it's just so amazing to... Uh, really know Christ, not just know about him, but really know him. And I think a lot of people in, in the pews uh, love Christ in the way that I love uh, a celebrity, in the way that I love uh, Justin Timberlake, in the way that I love uh, Stephen Furtick, in the way, you know, you know, like, you know of them. You know when they speak, your heart just is so enthralled. But you don't really know them. Like, I don't know what color Justin Timberlake's toothbrush is. Or I don't know what soap Stephen Furtick uses, you know. I know them, but I don't really know them, know them. And I think that's the kind of love and knowing that we have with God sometimes as Christians and I, like that we that we know that we that we know of him but we don't love him like that we know of him but we don't know him and that we love him but we don't look we're not we love him but we're not in love with him and I think when we say we love Jesus, it's kind of a, it's kind of a far away, like celebrity-like kind of love, you know. I think, like, so, you know, we love a certain celebrity or we love a certain pastor we see on TV, but we don't really know them. We love the way they speak. We, we love what we see. But we don't really know them, but I think that's the kind of love we have for Christ. And I think that's why 
uh, well, some of us, so, some of us have that kind of love, love for Christ, like that, that distant, uh, praying once a day or twice a day kind of love. But he wants us to know him intimately. Like, he wants us to have, to have intimate contact with him. And, like, intimate intimate contact means intimacy and i think an intimate contact with god will breed compassion and i think because when you have intimate contact with someone their personality traits their their ways of doing it some of it rubs it off on you and then you become a better person, you become more richer because of them, and that's what what the Lord wants for us. That's the kind of contact the Lord wants with us. That kind of intimate contact, um, and so that will breed compassion. That kind of intimate contact, being in love with Jesus instead of just loving Jesus, um, being, um, knowing Jesus instead of just, um, knowing about Jesus. Knowing somebody and knowing about them is totally different. You can you can look up any celebrity and know about them, but you don't know them. And I was talking to God about um, social media and and what, why it can be so harmful. The reason why it can be so harmful is because it gives a false sense of knowing a person. You can't know. A person within like a one minute video like you can't you can't like that's only not even a microsecond of a person's life you can't know somebody in a photo so we have the mistaken impression that we know people but we have no idea who they are and that's the falsehood of social media. I love social media. I'm on social media right now. But one of the falsehoods of it is that we act, we think we know somebody because of what they post. But we don't. And furthermore, we, we have pressure to post our best selves. Um, I heard Haley Bieber say uh, uh, a saying, post the best and leave the rest. But, but what we don't understand by, by um, the, these false postings and these false knowings, we pass judgment and we say, oh, why are they wearing that? Why are they doing that? We don't know them. We think we know them, but we have no idea who they are. We know of them. We don't know them. And I think before we we judge people, before we say, oh my God, why are they doing that? We need to understand that everybody has a life that you see, an outward life, or an, 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 an inner life. And I think until you know the inner life of a person, I think it's, it's detrimental to your spiritual health and your emotional health to really say anything about that person unless you are uh, intimately acquainted or unless you can speak into that person's life and I think when you speak into that person's life um, it gives you 
when you can see into that person's life, it, it gives you a window of what they're really going through. It's almost like what, what happened to me a few few minutes ago. I'll tell you what happened to me a few minutes ago. I was talking, 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 and then, and then my weather thing came up, and then the windows thing came up. I tried to get it down, but it wouldn't go down, and then all of a sudden this other pop-up came on, and now it's off, and now I can see you guys. But that, but that little weather thing or that little window thing was blocking um, my camera view. So what we can see of a person on Instagram, the little view that we have is really blocking what is really going on. So we see all these things like the weather, and all these advertisements like I saw and like it was blocking my camera it was blocking what I really needed to see so that's why I was and when that was happening to me just now I was trying to sing over it I was like oh my god how do I get this down how do I do this and then I and then um, another another pop up came and I was able to see you again. But before that, I wasn't able to see you. I was able to see something, but I was not able to see um, what I was supposed to see because whatever Windows was doing. It was blocking it. And I think that's what happens to us. We see what we see what people want us to see, but we don't see what's blocking it. And the Lord said, See behind the apps. See behind the advertisement. See behind the smoke screen. So what's the real picture? And ask God to give you his eyes into that person's life. So before you talk about a post without knowing anything, ask God to let you see behind uh, what the person wants you to see. And I think we're afraid, still afraid to be authentic because uh, we are afraid of judgment. But without authenticity, there can't, there can be no healing. And I think that's what, that was, is what happens that there needs to be real healing in this world and I think uh, sometimes real healing I, I believe that real healing can only come from God a uh, real relationship can only come from God I believe that um, real uh, real connection can only come from God and I think that um, in order to form real connection, we need to have a real relationship with people. Um, we need to meet people where they are, not as a project, not as an agenda, but just as a person. We need to stop thinking that getting souls into the kingdom is our job, like I said before and understand that it is God's job and we just need to um, plant the seed and be there for people when they need us and we need to have a compassionate heart and I always look at Jesus and how he how he interacted with people and it was so amazing because 
how he interacted with people was so was so just like a father or a friend or he healed them when when they needed healing if they needed to just t talk to the talk to him he was just a listener ear if they needed to know about salvation that's what he gave them if they needed uh, emotional healing that's what he gave them if they needed physical healing that's what he gave them don't presume to know what people need ask them what they need and when you ask them what they need and they say nothing just leave it at that just leave it there and let them know that you're there for them if they ever need you don't try and force people to to be in relationship with you let it come naturally um i'll say this one thing and then and then i will sign off for the day um i i don't like when strange guys dm me on facebook i absolutely hate it when they say oh do you have a boyfriend and they and they go go on there right away i'm the kind of person that likes relationship first they don't most guys that dm me on facebook they don't um they don't say hi rachel i enjoyed your sermon or whatever they don't try and build a relationship with me first they just jump into do you have a boyfriend and that's not that's not relationship building relationship building takes time relationship building takes a process so um even if guys like me build a relationship first with me um before you do that like ask me about the origin of a sermon or you know like you know what kind of music i like or whatever and study watch my videos if you're interested in what i do and what i like and ask questions in relation to those don't just jump into the relationship thing and when we build a rapport after a few weeks you could then you can ask because then I would feel more comfortable with you. And so I said that to say we need to build a rapport with people and stop pretending like like it's a mission, it's agenda to get people saying it's not our agenda it's the agenda of christ and for him it's not an agenda it's a privilege and um and what like what happened to me this morning um with all those windows windows things coming with the big window up and i couldn't see the camera it was like a screen of the weather app and the top stories of the day but it wasn't showing me what i needed to see so sometimes instagram and facebook is a smoke screen they're not really showing you what you need to see about that person they're showing you what that person wants to show you and we and we kind of take that and judge the person and say awful things about the person because 
um, we see what they posted and we make judgments on what they posted, not knowing that there are things behind it that we have no idea about, good or bad. So guys, thank you for being with me today. I really appreciate it. Sorry for the long way in the in the craziness because I have to admit when that when the advertisements wouldn't come down, it kind of freaks me out a bit. Um, until God said, calm down. When the unexpected happens, don't freak out, calm down, and it will resolve itself. And today it did, that's exactly what it did today. And uh, that's exactly what it did today. It just taught me to calm down and just just c keep going and keep preaching when things happen in your life instead of panicking like i did today and trying to cover it over um just stop and take a breath and keep moving it would have been so much better if I had a said when it was going on. Uh, guys, uh, there are some advertisements and something just on my screen and I can't see you guys. Let me, let me try and see if I can get this down. But no, I started singing and panicking and trying to make sure that things, trying to sing over things and trying to make things look pretty. The world doesn't need, need things to look pretty. They need the truth. And I'll say this, the world doesn't see, need things to be pretty. They need the truth. And that was the problem with me this morning. Because I thought things needed to be pretty, uh, things needed to be okay, but things would have gone a lot smoother if I said, guys, these advertisements are on my screen and I don't know how to get them down, uh, instead of trying to sing over it and make it look okay and whatever. And I think we're afraid to be honest because we're afraid to look stupid, we're afraid to look vulnerable. But vulnerability is the is the way to life and healing. Because who knows if I had said, How do I get these advertisements down? The weather keeps on showing up. And all these top news stories of the day keep on chewing up. One of you guys could have said, Oh, move the cursor this way, and it will be okay. Instead of, instead of saying something about what was going on, I kind of sang over it, I started to panic, and it was dead air for a while. I think just we need to be more comfortable to say things aren't going right. I need help. This, the weather thing isn't going right. It keeps on popping up. And how do I get it down? I think if I instead of that, instead of start, uh, trying to sing over it and keep on talking and pausing. You guys would have understood that I was having trouble. And one of you guys might have had the solution. So, speak up when things aren't going right. 
don't try and gloss over it like everything is okay. Say, things aren't going right today. Things aren't, I, I'm not doing well. And people will help you. And if people can't help you, somebody may be able to point you to the right resource or the thing may resolve on its own or somebody somebody when that happens to them won't be panicked or freaked out because they know you went through it too so Maybe somebody who sees this live video, this same thing will happen to them. And they'll know, oh, this happened to Rachel, just let me do this. When we share our pain, the greatest thing to realize is that we're not alone in whatever we're going through. There is nothing new under the sun. There is nothing that we are going through that probably millions around the world are going through, or at least somebody is going through it. And that somebody may have tips to go through it, or you may be able to share your pain with somebody. And sometimes when you share your pain with somebody, they feel that they're not alone because uh, <coughs> the devil likes isolation. And then when he can get you isolated, get you thinking that you're the only person that's going through this, that's why when he can put all these kind of crazy things in your mind. When you when you share your issues with a bunch of trusted people and a bunch of trusted friends, you know that, that they have your back. And I'm not saying share it with everybody, but find some trusted people and some trusted friends to share your issues with. I know I have some, some trusted friends like my mom and my friend Christine and my friend Sarah that I share uh, issues with. And it also depends on what issue. Because um, I have certain people that I go to, go to for different things. Like for a preaching thing, I go to my uh, former pastor and, or a few other pastor friends if I have a question about preaching or research when, when putting together a sermon or, you know, for financial, I go to another person or whatever. For issues with disabilities, I go to an, another friend I have. Um, so it, the person I go to often depends on what the issue is. And that happens sometimes in your life. Uh, that the person that you go to depend dependent on the issue. But you need someone to go to. You can't bottle up your issues, whatever they are, and deal with them. Because there is somebody that is going through the same or a similar issue than you. And two can put 10,000, a, a, a thousand to flight um, by, by sharing, by caring. And I think we suffer with a, a deeper pandemic than the coronavirus or the Delta variant. I think we st suffer with the pandemic of loneliness and the pandemic of loneliness is killing us. We are desperate for community. And here's another thing too that the Lord and I were talking about this week. 
Uh, we were talking about inreach and outreach. Um, a lot of churches have outreach programs for people um, for relief for certain disasters around the world. They either have them themselves or the partnerships or whatever, and that's wonderful. But I was thinking about um, the people actually in the pews, um, the people actually that go to the church or are like, e go to the church or um, stream the church online. I was thinking that um, that there needs to be, as well as outreach, there needs to be a, a place where, where the people that actually go to the church can go and receive help. Um, and I was thinking of a cool, cool ways to do that. The Lord's reforming and revealing stuff to his church, which is awesome. And what he's doing is so amazing. And I can't wait to see how this, this thing is going to turn out. Uh, I can't wait to see what's coming. I know something is coming. And I'm excited about this, this new season uh, that the Lord is bringing the church into. Um, I, I see different modes of creativity, uh, different ways of doing sermons. I see uh, churches traveling uh, that I have never traveled before. I just see different people with different ways of doing things, and it's incredible what the Lord's going to do. I'm so sorry that this was so long, partly due to like, the technical difficulties uh, this morning. Uh, so I will talk to you soon. I'll see you later, guys. Bye. Don't sing over things. Speak them. Don't gloss over things. Let people into them. Don't put up smoke screens on social media. Let people into your life and share your experiences. You want whatever you're going through, guys out there. There is someone going through, through with you, and God wants to help you with that. But if you're so private and and go through it by yourself, it's just very lonely. And the Lord doesn't want you to be alone. There are pockets of being alone that he wants you to experience so he can speak to you and talk to you. But he doesn't want you to live in loneliness. He wants you to live in community. So whatever you're going through, find someone to share. Find someone to lean on. Or be a shoulder for someone to lean on. Because there are people around you um, that need you. There are people that that need your love and need your care, not only people abroad in Afghanistan and Haiti, um, as sad as those situations were, um, but there are pe people next door to you that need your, that need your love and need your care. Lord, give us a heart of compassion. Cause us to see people the way you see people. Cause us to see people as victorious and as, and as full of love as you are. 
but also cause them to cause us to see them as hurting and broken broken people needing you as all of us do lord jesus give us your eyes give us your heart give us your mind give us what concerns you lord god we need a dose of your holy spirit we need a dose of your blood we need to know what concerns you we need to know what's on your heart for this hour teach us explain to us what you want us to do give us your desires that burn in you don't don't give us the desire that we desire put in our hearts what you desire to be there according to our personality and our purpose lord jesus and teach us how to be more like you burn in us holy spirit like never before burn in us with a fire set us ablaze. in the name of jesus amen and thank you for using that illustration this morning lord uh even though it was frustrating for me and dead air for about 10 minutes thank you for for teaching me about the smoke screen and not being able to see what i need to see thank you lord for your mishaps becoming messages and that's that's what happens in our lives lord that things we view as mishaps become be, the things we view as our mishaps become your messages so thank you lord for what happened this morning you have, you have a plan for everything and we bless you and we love you in the name of jesus name so guys i will see you later bye Don't put up smoke screens. Let people in to your darkness and the right people will bring light. First of all, let God into those dark places and he will send the right people and the right people will bring light to you. He wants to be in those dark places. You've been carrying it alone for too long and he doesn't want you to carry it alone. He wants you to know that he's there for it all. He sees it all. He sees how you're frustrated with being sing single, or you're frustrated with being married, or you're frustrated um, that you can't uh, stop eating, or you're frustrated with whatever you're frustrated with. Bring God right into that situation, no matter how insignificant it is feels. He's there. He's with you. He wants to be brought into it with you. Remember, your mishaps become his messages. <laughs>